Okay, so the beginning sequence, I stuck it in there because it used this trick to leave key, but then on the return movement, it did not use this trick. But there is one foolproof way, and I hate to actually show this, but uh, it's literally using progression, which we've talked about in the counterclockwise movement. We covered that within key. Now we're going to cover it showing you how you can use that to get out of key, okay? And we also showed uh, the opposite direction of circle of fists, and it's not as strong. And we have yet to co cover much on retrogression. So let's just do some, a quick experiment, okay? I'm going to take C Lydian. And then uh, E Dorian, okay? And we're going to go, we're going to pivot to E Dorian. So I'm going to leave now, but why did that work? Well, it's actually very simple. Um, here we go. I use the root movement, strong progressive root movement, counterclockwise in the circle of fifth from that E note to the A note. Okay, this is a way, a method you could use until you memorize all the possible pivot chords. I don't endorse actually using this all the time. And in a truthful, honest way, it promotes laziness in, in memorizing all possible pivot chords to a related key. So. so in that example, I went from C Lydian. The third chord is E. Well, what in the circle of fifths is directly related to that? Some form of A. So that's what I did. And that's what makes it going from C Lydian to E Dorian so easy. Because of that, I used that one strong progressive fifth based move e to a and a counterclockwise movement okay that is super strong so in truth here you don't even need to know where that e minor is in terms of the relationship between that a major chord in terms of pivoting you don't need to even need to know you're just looking at the circle of fifth relationship and saying what's a strong progressive move that i can do and well it's e to a the e root to a root doesn't matter if it's minor or major either chord so that's what I, that's how I got from C Lydian to E Dorian so easy. But again, before we go farther, this is not a substitute for memorization of common chords between common or, or closely related keys like C to F. There's four common chords, and you should probably know those. Okay, or G. There's four common chords, and two keys away, like B flat to C. There's two common chords. Oppositely, C to D, um, there's two common chords. So you should know those things. However, we can use this trick in the meantime. Okay. So I wrote down a little sequence below that you can use, but we're gonna we're gonna first use it. Um, e, we're gonna go from E minor to F first without using this trick. Okay. We're gonna find we're gonna use common chords. So this is why you don't want to limit yourself. I'm just gonna improvise this in. Okay, so that used a lot more of common chords that you would have to memorize. But this particular sequence here, it, you don't really have to memorize because you're just looking at the root movement. Strong root movement, counterclockwise. And you might use it as a way to get to B flat minor because it's still going in the same direction. So you might use it as like a constant, it's almost like a constant Dorian 1-4 uh, pivot modulation. If you do it like this, it's almost like constantly shifting Dorian centers. And let's just find a way to end it. Okay. So, um, that's pure progression, strong fifth bass movement counterclockwise. So you could do stuff like minor sevenths to dominant chords. Just for a different sound, if you're whatever style in you're into. So, it's it'll still work. It doesn't matter. Um, you can do the same thing, kind of like this, just as an effect. Okay, so. So the point is, is that no matter what chord you choose, major or minor, in the counterclockwise direction, that strong progression, it's always going to work. 
So um, let's take this E minor to A move just in that little sequence below, okay? And then we're going to do an experiment. We're not going to go around the circle of fifths. We're going to use E uh, Phrygian and then resolve out to that A chord, okay? And you could use any mode once you hit A. This is what I mean, easy way to pivot chord modulate. Okay. You could go anywhere. And I used another another fist-based uh, counterclockwise uh, root movement there again when I was in that sequence. So, so if you look in the circle of fifths at F sharp minor, F sharp minor could go straight to that B. Okay, and you notice it works, and we don't even need to know what common chords are you're pivoting off of. You could just use the circle of fifths once you hit a, any chord you land on. So let's continue on with the experiment. Let's see if C major. And it's the three chords of E minor. We could go straight to that A again, okay? And you could treat the A as anything. It's treated as Phrygian dominant. Once again, that E root to A root gave us an instant pivot chord, which is strong progression. And we don't even need to know what how it relates. We could just E minor, seventh, a, and then treating that as fr Phrygian dominant. And the only thing we need to know is that relationship between the E root and the A root. That's it. So let's do this again. Let's go to uh, C major to A. Actually, let's do A with a pentatonic or a feel, okay? Just to show that it really doesn't matter. We're still going to use that strong progression-based move, counterclockwise. Same progression as before. Now just A major pentatonic. So the only thing we need to know is that E roots related to the A root. That's it. Strong progression. So let's go um, G Lydian. Go to the F sharp minor, which is a seven chord lady, and then just resolve out to a B. It doesn't matter. Um, F sharp minor to B. So, so I'll do it musically as best I can. Let's convert that to a B minor. Do the same thing. Resolve out to an E. Okay. I'll stop there. But F sharp minor B. Right after G Lydian. G Lydian, the F sharp minor is the seven chord. Now you can take it to a B chord. It doesn't matter, you've modulated out now. And it's very easy. You're just looking at the root movement. So the B minor is the three chord of G Lydian. So what happens if we do that same thing? Where can the B minor go? It can go to an E. Okay. And you can treat the E as like E major, E uh, Lydian, whatever. So, um, so the whole point is like the sequence below. It doesn't matter what chord you choose, what kind of color. If you're going in that strong progression-based direction, it will always work. But you're just taking shorter bursts of this instead, depending on what chord you land on. Let's take, uh, let's use an E minor chord, but first starting with G mix Lydian. And then using a pivot chord like that. It's a smaller burst of that circle of fifth movement, okay? Just smaller burst. This is using a lot of retrogression. F minor. E root can go straight to the A. It works. You don't even need to know why. I'll just stay in A mixolydian. You don't even need to know why. You just look at the root movement here, whatever chord you land on. I'm doing that G mixolydian thing again on the E minor. Well, E A. Okay. Now we're treating that as e A mixolydian. So this is a really, really, really simple, simplified way to learn to modulate by using shorter bursts of this. Uh, of this strong progressive root movement, okay, based on the circle of fifths, literally um, 
any any form of D can go to any form of G, any form of E can go to any form of A, but you're only using small aspects of that. So you don't, so you actually are still using pivot chords when you do this, but you don't need to know. You could just look at this. It's, if you if you're learning, just want to modulate somewhere, and not even know how you got there, you could just use this chart here, uh, the circle of fifth chart. One of these roots, major or minor chord, can go to another one of these roots, major or minor chord, and it will work in that counterclockwise progression-based direction. So you could just use that temporary move to shift out. However, again, my disclaimer is, is don't use this as a substitute to, for modulation and then skip memorizing all keys and all common chords because you're missing a lot of other common chord pivot style modulations. You're missing out on a lot of that especially the retrogressive kind of uh, common chord piv pivots. They're actually really good for like film composer types and whatnot. But you can use this one in the meantime. It's kind of like, I call this a cheat method because uh, you just literally say, well, I'm landing on this chord in key. What, what root is it related to out of key in the counterclockwise progression-based circle of fifths movement and then move into that chord? That's all you're doing. It's not, it doesn't require you to memorize anything. And truthfully, sometimes it can be a little bit of a robotic method because it's, you're, if you don't want this to become a crutch. So, uh, it's just an easy way to modulate. This is probably the easiest way I've ever found to modulate with pivot chords and not know what the pivot chord is and not how it relates to what key. So it doesn't matter. I mean, you literally are just using that relationship in the circle of fifths. So when you're in any mode, for instance, landing on any specific chord, you could literally look at the circle of fifths and say, what chord outside of key that has a strong relationship to this root can I move to? And again, this is one of the easiest ways you could use common chord pivots without even knowing how they relate to each other. So again, memorize all common chords between keys, but also this is one way you could start modulating right away.